what's up y'all what's going on long time no see oh my gosh it's a little windy i hope y'all can still hear me you feel me but we back with another episode we back with another episode we back with another god chill 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 and you already know it's just me so it's a shawnee's podcast what y'all been up to what's going on you feel me? Yeah, we somewhere new. You feel me? New scenery, trying something different, trying to change it up, spice it up, or whatever. And this is what I came up with. So we're going to see how long we rock out with this scenery. But with that being said, excuse me, let's get into it. So, y'all, it's a little hot out here, but the wind is doing me justice. So it's August or whatever, but we're not going to just skip past how everybody wanted to celebrate the 4th of July. Like, I just, I just, I don't get it. It's either y'all with the shits or y'all not. We either celebrating it or we not. I mean, I'm not a part of that. I stand on what I said. I'm not celebrating the 4th of July. That's not for us. That's not our Independence Day. Juneteenth is for us. That's our Independence Day. And I don't know, maybe it's just y'all look for any reason to get lit. Y'all don't really care about the meaning behind the things that y'all celebrate, the things that y'all do. Like, do you understand? Y'all be putting mad money in these people's pockets on the 4th of July for no reason. And they just be milking it, milking it. You think they're going to stop y'all? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. So, you know, if y'all want to keep celebrating the 4th of July, then go ahead y'all do that but i will not be participating in the festivities okay okay i just really honestly ignore this cord by the way this a portable charger my phone is dying anyways i just really think that y'all just can't get over this bandwagon mentality because the what was it like two years ago or maybe even like no i think it was two years ago maybe last year i'm not sure but one of these years, everybody was just so focused on Juneteenth, Juneteenth, Juneteenth. We're not celebrating the 4th of July. Was that just for that year? <laughs> like, did y'all just fall in line with everybody else just for that year? But then everybody else went back to celebrating the 4th of July. So everybody else followed that person. Whoever the leader is, show yourself. Because you got the power. You really got the power. I don't know who you are and what kind of influence you have, but you got a big influence because... I just don't get it. Like literally, all I saw down my Instagram, we are not celebrating the 4th of July. We are not celebrating the 4th of July. This year, I see everybody outside, pool parties, cookouts. Oh, it's the 4th tomorrow, what's the moves? Um, I thought, okay, okay. But you know, I just speak on stuff. I let y'all, let the information marinate y'all in y'all heads and y'all could comment give y'all opinions say what y'all want to say whatever y'all do what y'all do with the information in my opinions and that's it but i'm always say how i feel and my opinion about everything because you don't see the sign but you see me and you know what this is a shawnee's podcast and you know how i do so yeah with that being said we're gonna move on sorry y'all my man is texting me like he don't know that i'm out here filming like you're interrupting me sir anyways so yes i want to go to sorry i'm near the woods and you know we got animals over here so i need to be aware of my surroundings okay yes lord so yes i'm gonna talk about the crown act all right and for those of you who do not know what the crown act is i'm gonna tell you right now Mind you, I'm outside, it's sunny, I'm hot, but just bear with me, okay? Now, the Crown Act, which stands for Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair, is a law that prohibits race-based hair discrimination, which is the denial of employment and educational opportunities because of hair texture or protective hairstyles, including braids, locks, twists, or bantu knots. Okay. <clears throat> and y'all probably like what you want to talk about that for what you want to talk about that for because i'm a big advocate for our people our culture what i feel like we should do and what i feel like we should stop doing of course everybody's their own person everybody's entitled to feel how they feel 
it is a piece of hair bothering me and i know y'all see me try and get it <laughs> anyway but yes everybody's entitled to feel how they want to feel everybody's entitled to their opinion i'm just here to speak on certain things that others may not be aware of and listen it's a lot of us that's going to lack the knowledge because we are not being taught the things that we need to be taught and i'm gonna get into that a little bit later so just stick with me stick with me so now Okay, so with the Crown Act, what I want to talk about is the fact that even with the Crown Act, okay, there's there's laws that come into play that they think are giving us equality or helping us out or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, any person that's in position of power that wants to deny employment to anybody can do so. So I don't really like these laws, these acts or whatever the case may be. Oh, no. So, right. Yo, I am back, okay? Yes, I had to come back in the hot. Hold up. Oh, yo. See, I be having to make sure all the angles is good, all that, all that. I gotta be the, the star of the show. I gotta be the producer of the show, the editor of the show, the director. Jesus. Give me a team, please. And I got my team, you feel me? You don't get it twisted, but I'm talking about a personal team. You feel me? So, yeah. Anyways, y'all. Where did I leave off at? And if you wonder why I came back inside, no, it wasn't me. I am the type of person where if I'm doing something for the greater good, which is this, my podcast, <laughs> you know, and I believe in something and I really work for it, like, I don't play by myself. Y'all know that by now. Come on now. How many times do I say that? So with that being said, I'm going to do what I have to do to catch y'all attention. And if I see something not working, I'm going to try my best to switch it up. So with that being said, that's what I was trying to do. Change up the scenery. See if, like, you know, I could grab y'all attention a little bit more that way or whatever the case may be. But literally, my camera overheated in, like, five seconds. So the sun said, not today. And I said, well, I need some episodes out for my audience, the two people that I do consistently have. So with that being said, um, I did have to come back in, but that's not stopping nothing. It's not stopping this show. So let's get back into this. Cause what's going to be is going to be, the devil will try to stop you the best that he can. But when my God mm, has a vision for me, mm, don't get me started, y'all. Don't get me started. Okay, so going back to the Crown Act, I told y'all what it meant. So let's really say, like, dig deep into it. I wanted to talk about it because I just feel like there's this stigma that we have and of trying, the stigma of trying to fit in or what's normal and what's not normal. Who are any of you to say what is normal and what is not normal? Who ever said, straight hair that's the thing that's normal that's what you're supposed to look like that's what you're supposed to do who in a right mind said that who in a right mind thought that that was the norm like once again the norm they are trying to make everything white normal that's not okay that don't sit right with me and i don't know about y'all but no we ain't going for that over here so with that being said like we've been okay how many of y'all had a job interview and y'all like, I can't go out, I can't go in there with no afro. I can't go in there with this big poop on my head, with this nappy hair. I can't go in there. Let me get a wig. Let me get some weave. Let me straighten my hair. I got a job interview. Or anywhere that you felt like it was professional, you felt like you had to lessen your culture, lessen who you are as a black individual to fit in in that certain environment. Put, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. Oh, I'm about to go to this certain establishment, so I need to look a certain way. I'm about to have this certain job, so I need to look a certain way. Even with this, I realize that you have to look a certain way, but you don't have to lose yourself to look a certain way. Of course, you don't want to come over here looking like a bum, sweatpants, t-shirt, chilling with no makeup on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's when you look the best, but sis, you know, people like to look at something attractive and well put together. 
you put yourself together is not lessening yourself, taking away from your culture, taking away from who you are as an individual. But when you sit there and feel like you can't wear box braids or you can't wear locks or you can't wear your fro, that's when it becomes a problem. Because that's who you are. That's who you were born. That's who you were born as. That's the hair that came out with you. You nappy headed, you nappy headed. <laughs> no. So, you know, I really don't even like the word nappy because it's just, it's been used in such a negative way that it now has a negative meaning behind it. Let's look at the definition, the real definition of nappy. Wow. So nappy don't even got nothing to do with here. If you go to the Urban Dictionary, you do. But even the Urban Dictionary says that the word nappy is offensive. But it says it's naturally coarse and tightly coiled, kinky sense. He looks hip and relaxed in jeans and floppy. Oh, okay, they trying to give me an example. I know what it means. But yes, it says of hair, informal, plus sometimes offensive. Naturally coarse and tightly coiled. Your hair is naturally coarse and tightly coiled. It ain't nappy. You feel me? Like some people hair is just naturally thick. It's naturally like, Jesus. You feel me? Like it may be a little workout, but that's their natural state of their hair. But we don't want to talk about when some of these white people wet their hair and they get all mad at and stuff. And we I don't talk about that. All right, cool, whatever. We don't got to. Let's move on. But when you look at the real definition of nappy, this is the definition. A piece of absorbent material wrapped around a baby's bottom and, and, and between its legs to absorb and retain urine and feces. So a nappy is a diaper. I said a nappy. <laughs> nappy means diaper. I never knew that. So you feel you see why we do this? <laughs> Y'all help me learn new things also. Because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure 90% of us did not know that was the real definition of nappy. So you talking about you you sitting over here talking about oh your hair nappy, your hair nappy. You basically saying somebody here is a diaper. <laughs> I would be offended too. <laughs> okay. But no, let's let's be real. Let's get back on track. You honestly think that somebody, a little girl, a little black girl was going to feel okay with wearing their natural hair? Me personally, I'm going to get deep. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I never liked wearing my natural hair. Now, I don't care. I'll wear it. You feel me? I'll get a little blowout or whatever. I'll wear it. I'll even wear it as an afro. But I know that as a younger female, I did not like wearing my real hair out. I know females, young females now who don't like to wear their real hair out. Why? Because we were taught that that looks horrible. That looks bad. And then we want to make jokes. You look like an African. How is that? And how is that ever a joke? How is that ever something? There's just so many technical difficulties going on right now. But y'all know me. The devil is not stopping anything. So with that being said, like I was saying, stop calling your hair nappy. Your hair is not nappy. They call it the crown neck for a reason. It's our crown. We need to wear it as such. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't straighten your hair. Because like I said, I'll get me a quick blowout. You feel me? I'll, but at the same time, I'll still wear an afro. So it's like, you know, don't be ashamed of it. If that's just not your preference, that's not your preference. Don't be ashamed of it, though. But like I said, just don't be ashamed of it. That's not your preference. All right, cool. That's not your preference. Because me, I'll get a blowout. I'll wear an afro. I'll get a wig. I'll get a... Sewing is kind of toughy for me. Because, you know, like, my hair just don't stay straight. I'm one of those girls with the thick hair okay and it just don't stay straight and then that's another thing parents back in the day i think it was them being lazy okay <laughs> the messenger but i think it was laziness y'all didn't want to deal with the, the hair the texture of our hair and doing all that combing and all this and dealing with the crying and stuff like that <clears throat> so y'all wanted us to get perms Y'all making us think. Parents did not do good with making us be comfortable with our own hair. Not all parents. I'm pretty sure some parents out there who did do good, but a lot of parents did not. How many of us know about the perms? The little kid perms with the little girlies on the front? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
perming out here, making us think that it got to be oh so straight and oh so voluptuous and da -da -da -da. no, our hair is beautiful too. And we need to start teaching the younger generations that so they don't grow up thinking, oh, our hair needs to be like that. That's the norm. That's the right way to wear your hair. No, because that's not the case at all. So with that being said, oh, and now we know, now that we are grown up and we are adults, we know that perms were damaging our hair, that perms caused cancer. Oops, excuse me. Perms was just no good for us. So we sit here, but like, come on now, anything that you got mixed up and stir together, what kind of chemicals are good for you? Let's really think about it. It's chemicals and it's burning. We didn't think about that. That was a red flag. Mayday, mayday. Like what? SOS. <laughs> My scalp is burning. <laughs> like, what? Come on now. You're definitely dying and frying your hair, even with straightening it, getting a blowout. You feel me? There's ways to protect it, though. We got heat protective. We got stuff like that. But there is no way to protect your hair from a perm, except for not getting a perm. So, yeah. I'm glad we grew out of that phase. I don't remember the last time I heard somebody talking about a perm, talking about getting a perm. I don't remember that. So... I'm glad we done grew out of that, but as far as us trying to fit in certain places because we think that we can't wear our hair a certain way, we got to change that mindset, and we should not teach that or pass that on to the younger generations because that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. So, yeah. <clears throat> but... All right, let's talk about this. Do y'all ever notice how when we embrace something, everybody else starts to embrace it too? And when I say everybody else, I really just mean the white people. Oh, let's talk about it. You do not see Chinese people walking around here with locks. You don't see, what's another race? You know, you just don't see other races doing stuff except for the white people. Box braids, locks, you feel me? They want to... Um, they want to get that natural type of state. They want to have curly little afros or whatever. They want that. They want that. So they try to diminish us, make us feel bad for it. But now that we embracing it, they like, oh, well, let's hop on that bandwagon. Oh, those look nice. Those look cool. I want to be hip. I want to be urban. No, they think it is something cool. But this is really our culture, our lifestyle, something that we do. For the people want to jump, jump in the comments like, do y'all own hair files? We don't own it, but we created it. It came from us. Let's talk about it. What do white people do that we ever want to take away except for the things that we deserve, equality? The only thing that y'all have that we may fight for is the white privilege that y'all get because of y'all skin color. <coughs> Excuse me. That's it. That's literally it. So when we embrace ourselves and our cultures other people start coming around and want to embrace and be part of it and be down or whatever the case may be like whatever moving on moving on laws don't matter that's basically what i was just saying earlier in the episode yeah we got the crown act yeah we got you know laws trying to make us equal or whatever but to me they just fake it a funk they like all right we created this law which i want us to do enforce it start making people pay for their actions taking accountability for what they do y'all still got cops out here that just uh, willy-nilly doing whatever i okay i recently started watching this show called swat you feel me and i don't know how true this is correct me if i'm wrong but is there not a rule inside the police system that says that if there are any police officers who who are racist, but like they show signs of racism, you think they are racist in any type of way, you must report, report it to IA, which is um, Internal Affairs, who handle police officers and determine if they could keep their jobs and get fired and stuff like that. So you're supposed to turn them over to IA, they do an investigation, and that cop is suspended and on desk duty while the inf investigation is going on, right? So, you know, they do their research, da 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 If they come to the conclusion that he's racist, they, then he gets fired. And if not, then he stays. And y'all probably like, how can you get evidence? How can you get evidence? Do your job as a police officer and get the evidence. You feel me? Like, 
and it's just this one specific episode where it was a black SWAT officer and a white SWAT officer. They were close. They are close, close. You feel me? If you watch, you know who I'm talking about. And basically, the white officer was like, I'm not sure how to, how to turn him over to IA because he knew of another white officer that was racist. He's like, I'm not sure how to turn him over to IA without turning, without offending my police unit. You know, you don't want to turn your back on your badge. Like, this is your gang, this is your team. You're never supposed to go against the cold. All right, cool. He didn't know how to not do that and still do the right thing, which was turning over a racist cop. So the black cop is like, all right, you know what? You do what you gotta do. Me, the whole time, I'm like, yo, you know what you gotta do. You better turn him over. And to be honest, I feel like a lot of cops need to be like that. A lot of white cops need to stand up because if that black cop go by himself and say, oh yeah, he's a racist, he could come with all the evidence he got. Nobody's paying him no mind. But when the white cops stand up against other white cops, then it's like, all right, hold up now. What's going on? You feel me? But, you know, people be scared. Oh, I don't want to turn against him. If your man is doing wrong, correct him. Like, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't get it. Moral of the story is he got the evidence by recording one of his situ- by recording one of their conversations. Of course, he's a racist, so the conversation entailed racist comments. So, I just feel like the laws don't matter. Like, People sit here and be like, oh, y'all got this, y'all got that. But it's not being enforced. People are not caring. There's mad laws out here that be broken every day. So you think you giving us this crown act or you think you giving us this law that you may think may help us with equality and stuff like that. No, what is that really doing if it's not being enforced and people is not taking it serious? And if y'all not giving people consequences for not taking it serious. It's like y'all just throwing us something so we could be quiet. No, <laughs> I don't like that. Don't get me wrong. I do not want y'all to think I'm just bashing white people, bashing white people. But there are certain things that need to be spoken on. And since I am a woman of color, I feel like it is a responsibility of mine to spread light onto certain things. And I'm going to speak on what I want to speak on. How many times have y'all heard that? <laughs> okay, like that still stands. So honestly... I just feel like we need to be put in positions of power, like I said a couple episodes ago, so that we can make the change from the inside out. Yes, you you probably get an academy or whatever. You probably like, what can I really do? What can I really do? You could grow, 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 until you get up into a higher position to where you can make change and where you can make decisions and don't be afraid to do so. Because whatever God allows is going to happen, like literally. You cannot be afraid to do what's right. No matter who's going to go against you, no matter what the outcome may be, you cannot be afraid to do what's right. Oh, it's just me by myself. It's just little old me. Like, what am I supposed to do? You're making excuses at this point. If you join the academy, you join the union, you join whatever to make a change, You need to stick beside that and make the change. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Do I need to say one more time? Sacrifice. (laughs) Like, that's just what? That's the, the biggest thing. Regardless of a relationship, regardless of a job, regardless of what it is, if you really want something, it's going to cause you to make sacrifices. That's only if you really want it. Now, if you don't care, all right, whatever. You ain't going to make no sacrifices. But when you really want something, you're going to make a sacrifice. You want a relationship. You want to fight for your partner. You're going to make sacrifices. And I will hope that it will be reciprocated. You feel me? You want to grow. You want to change the system. you got to make sacrifices. You want to follow your dreams. you got to make sacrifices. Anything that you want in life, sacrifices. (laughs) sacrifices <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm gonna just leave it at that for real but yeah with that being said and i do understand that it is hard to grow and be put in a position of power as an african-american excuse me once again sorry but yeah as an african-american i do understand that 100 because at the end of the day 
white people tend to put their people in position of powers. I said position of powers. This is not Austin Powers, okay. But no, for real. They, I realize that white people tend to put other white people in position of power because it's common, you know, it's the way to go, or whatever the case may be. They're gonna, they want to keep their tradition going. They want to keep it in the family. Oh, my son is going to pass it down to his son, to his son, da 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 da. But this is where a problem comes in. At. I understand generational wealth, you know, keep it in the fam. That's great and dandy. But let's really talk about it. How many white kids are crackheads? Undercover crackheads. I, I can almost guarantee y'all that it would be more white people in jail if they actually got held accountable for the things that they did. I don't got, how many of us African-Americans got rich, rich parents that could bail us out every single time, get records expunged and get this off the record. Oh, make sure, let me pay you to keep this a secret. Don't even arrest them, bring them to the house. How many of us can do that? There's more white people that can do that and do do that than there is us. And I honestly feel like that's why we are more, not even, that's not even, that's one reason why we, it's most of us in the jail system than them. But the other reason is, of course, racial profiling. Like, we, we just can't win, bro. We just can't win. But at the end of the day, they get away with most of the stuff that they get away with because they're, it's being bought. White privilege. Stuff like that. Even if you don't got a rich parent, if you're a white kid and you just like, I'm sorry, officer, you know, pleading your case or whatever, he probably like, all right, go ahead, buddy. But let it be a black kid. I'm sorry, officer. Whoa, you're being too aggressive. You're being too aggressive. Sir, I need to see your hands. I need to see your hands. Sir, please. Boom, boom. It's a wrap. All he was doing was the same exact thing that that white kid was doing, but, you, but he got it. All right, buddy, go ahead compared to a black kid that's laying there dead. Okay, like what? Whew. Okay, but like I said, going back to the position of power, they wanna keep it in the family. You know, if there was a black candidate who was overqualified, could really take your company to the next level compared to the owner's son, who he choosing? His son. His son that take a break every up uh, every 30 minutes to go in the bathroom and spill some cocaine. Like, come on. Like, let's really talk about it. How many white kids duck up to go to the bathroom and <laughs> sniff, sniff, sniff? How many of us is doing it? Oh. Okay. How many corporate jobs can you really go in? <laughs> and really guarantee me that you're not gonna find at least three to five white people who sniff coat, who snort coat, please, please, if you can guarantee me that, just guarantee it, like, I ain't got nothing for you, <laughs> but if you can guarantee me that, then okay, all right. You feel me? But I'm just saying, like, let's really look at it. White people get away with a lot of stuff because they can financially do so. And then the cops, y'all not holding nobody accountable. Y'all should be, other cops should be holding cops accountable for taking bribes because that's against the law. Cops break the law every day too, but we don't want to talk about that because what, they in a position of power. It's all about being in a position of power. I'm pretty sure Jay-Z and Beyonce can get away with some, some stuff too. It's all about being in a position of power. Money, 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 power, power, power. That's all it's about. What can you do for me? You want to get out of this? What can you do for me? Okay. 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 All right. And we're not even going to talk about how some of these kids, they're not even qualified to run any of these companies. But once again, you want to keep it in their family and you'd rather give it to your child than a successful black kid who could take your company to the next level. But you know, he's black, he's not worth it, okay? Cool, cool. So when your company flops the next year because your son don't know what he's doing, don't try to call that black kid to come save the day because that's all he is to you, a black kid. Probably don't remember his name. 
And it really just baffles me and bothers me because it's just like the way that white people act towards us and the way that they treat us is just baffling. Like, it's just like so like, why are y'all like that? Not all of y'all, of course. If you know I'm not talking to you or about you, then you shouldn't get offended. If you get offended, then you probably got a little bit of racism in your blood. I don't know. I don't know why you're getting offended. That's a question between you and your counselor, you and God, whoever you speak to, whoever you go to for advice. That's between y'all. But my opinion, I just feel like if you get offended by anything that I speak on, you need to look in the mirror and have a conversation with you and figure out what's going on because nothing that I speak on is false. And it's not to make anyone feel offended, but it's just to shed light on certain things that a lot of people don't think about on a daily basis. <clears throat> Real. Yeah, you know, they always want to pick the white kid over the black kid. It's just, that's just the world we live in. And I sh probably shouldn't say always, because like I said, everybody's not like that, but sometimes that's just how it is. Even with promotions, sometimes it is an advantage. Oh, you got to make a team look a certain way, so you're going to hire the black guy because it's going to make y'all look more, what's the word I'm looking for? More um, diverse. Like, no, like, don't use me to make y'all look good. Like, what's really going on? So I just don't even, and, and then this is a whole other side note, just, just to jump to the side real quick on a whole other lane. It just popped up in my head because I was talking about it the other day. Like, you know how white people hate being called, called boy? <laughs> they find it so disrespectful, but they be quick to call black men boys. Like, what's up with you, boy? What you doing, boy? But you turn around and be like, hey, boy, they just get so offended. But if we get offended, we doing too much, we overreacting. How do you get offended by a word, but I use the same word on you and you still get offended? Like, yes, we all know boy itself is not an offensive term, but when they use it, it is being, it is being used in an offensive way. And we know that because when we use it back, they get offended. So I just want to like, okay, you may think that you're not racist, but sometimes the way some of y'all talk and the way that y'all think and the things that y'all say makes you look pretty racist, buddy. It really does. So I feel like y'all need to be more cautious as to what y'all say, like, honestly, because if somebody reverses it back on you and then you get offended and try to play victim, it's kind of like, so you are a racist because you call me a boy. Now I'm calling you one and you're getting offended. All right.